a particle P is moving along a straight line that passes through a fixed point O. The displacement S meters or P from O at time T seconds is given by S is equal to T cubed minus 8T squared plus 16T minus 5. Find the times when the particle changes direction and B when the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so we've got S is T cubed minus 8T squared plus 16T minus 5. In order to uh, find where the particle changes direction, we need to find when the velocity is equal to 0. So V is dS dt, dt. So differentiating this term by term, we're going to get 3T squared plus 2 times 8 minus 16T plus 16, and then obviously when we differentiate 5 at the end, we get nothing. Okay, so we need to put that equal to 0. So when v is equal to 0, we get 3t squared minus 16t plus 16 is equal to 0. We can factorise that. Uh, the product will be 3 times 16, which is 48, and the sum is minus 16. We want two numbers. When we multiply them together, we get 48, and the add the same two numbers will get minus 16. With a bit of trial and improvement, you'll come up with minus 12 and minus 4. Minus 12 times minus 4 makes 48. Minus 12 plus minus 4 makes minus 16. So when we now write down the expression, but split the middle term up into minus 12x minus 4, sorry, not x, t, minus 4t plus 16 is equal to 0. We now group the first two terms together to factorise fully. So the common factor is 3t, and you're going to be left with t minus 4. Bring down the sign, whatever's here, minus. Group the next two terms together as a common factor of 4. OK, and then we get t minus 4. Don't, don't forget to change the sign because we put a bracket in. Now, if you do this process correctly here and here, you always end up with the same thing. That's what comes out as a common factor, t minus 4. And you're left with 3t minus 4 is equal to 0. If you're not sure, you can always multiply back out again and check you get back to that. So either 3t minus 4 is equal to 0, 3t is equal to 4. Adding 4 to both sides, dividing by 3, get t is 4 over 3. Or t minus 4 is equal to 0, which gives t is equal to 4. Now you might just want to check, but it's pretty obvious in this case, that these at these particular points that the velocity curve just does actually cross the uh, t axis or the horizontal axis. Okay, so one way to do it is to sketch. So as quadratics are quite easy to sketch. If you put on, so we've got v is 3t squared minus 16t plus 16. We found that it's a 0 at 4 over 3 and 4. And quadratics are either like that or like this. This is a happy, sad face because it's positive. And we know it will go through on the vertical axis at 16. So the curve will look like that. We can see at definitely at this point here, it goes from being positive to negative. And here it goes from negative to positive, so it's definitely change of direction. What you've got to be careful is that you don't have a perfect square and it just touches the axis and comes back up because what's going to happen is it's going to slow down, stop momentarily, and then carry on in the same direction. So t will be equal to 4 over 3 seconds and t is equal to 4. So part b, acceleration is the, the different derivative of dv by dt or differentiating the displacement function twice. So v will be is 3t squared minus 16t plus 16. If we differentiate this, we're just going to get 6t minus 16. We want to know where it's equal to 2. So when a is equal to 2 meters per second squared, we put 6t minus 16 is equal to 2, 6t is equal to 18, therefore t will be equal to 3 seconds. So this has been a video to show you where a particle changes direction, how to find when a particle changes direction and when the acceleration has uh, the time when the acceleration has a particular value. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching.